At this point in the tutorial, we're going to start jumping around a little bit. I will come back and provide a quick overview for a lot of the things that we're going to skip over for various reasons. So if you're confused as to what certain things are, don't worry, we'll touch on that a little bit later. But for now, the next thing we're going to actually do in SEO Checklist in the Optimizing Content tab is scroll down a little bit until you see Install and Enable W3C Validator Module. You can find this at drupal.org slash projects slash W3C underscore validator. And this module uses the W3C validator that you can find at validator.w3.org to analyze the HTML in your pages and essentially tell you whether your HTML is completely valid. Now this is important for SEO because most search engines will dock you some points if you have poorly formed HTML, it's kind of sort of a sign of a not very well made site. On the other hand, if your HTML is perfect, that's a point for you. So go ahead and download and install the W3C validator module and come back when you're done. So once you have that downloaded and placed on your site, you can find that under the W3C validator tab and it's just a single module. We'll check it and click install. We can go to it by typing in W3C, or we can go to Reports and W3C Validation Report. Now, when you go here, you'll get a screen that looks like this. Now, I should mention at this point that if you read the information here on the W3C Validator Modules project page, it'll tell you that this is primarily meant to be used with the W3C validator script, which should be installed on your server. And then this module sort of ties into that and gives you information that way. Now I'm going to assume that you're not necessarily in a situation where you can just install a script on your server. Maybe you're on shared hosting or some other sort of web host where that's not allowed, or maybe you just don't know how to do that. And that's okay. There are alternate methods of using this if you can't do that. But there are a few things to know about that. If we click on advanced operations here, we get this box open and we get the button to revalidate all pages. We can do this as a logged in user or not. I usually like to unselect it and have them checked as an anonymous user because in most cases, what you care about is how the anonymous users see your site or their browsers, especially. And we don't need to include admin pages because the search engines generally don't care about those. And we don't really care what the search engines think about those pages, generally speaking. Now, I also should mention here that when in a minute, when we try to run revalidate all pages, it's not going to work unless we're on a live site that's actually connected to the Internet. If you're working in a dev environment like I am and you're on localhost or something like that, this module doesn't work. We're still going to run it to take a look and I can show you the things that the information that it'll give you, but it's not actually going to work if we're on a local host. So keep that in mind as well. Now, one more thing to note is that if you're running a really a medium size or larger site, you shouldn't probably validate all pages. The reason is, that's technically considered an abuse of this service because what you're doing is, of course, this is an online service and it's free, of course. What you're doing when you revalidate all pages is you're essentially sending every single web page on your site, aside from your admin pages, to this service and having it check them one by one by one by one by one. Now, if you have thousands of pages that you're checking, that's using up a lot of the validator's resources. If you do that, what's likely to happen is your, is your IP address is going to get banned for a certain amount of time from using this service. So if you're running a mid-sized site or a large site, what I would recommend is maybe just picking out one or two pieces of content from each content type on your site and manually run them through this validator which is again at validator.w3.org. But if you're running a small site or 
if you're able to install the W3C validator script, then what you're going to do the first time after you install this module is click revalidate all pages on this page. Now again, I'm on localhost, I'm going to get essentially a bunch of errors, but it'll still provide a little bit of information that's helpful for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and click that now. Yes, we do want to revalidate all pages. So once that validation finishes running, you see for me, I have zero errors and zero warnings on all of these pieces of content. It does say that the validation is outdated. And again, that's because I'm not on a live website. It wasn't actually able to access the validator, but we can still take a look. So once you run your site through the validation, you can click any piece of content, including the front page. I'll just go with this piece of content. And for me, it says errors found while checking this document. But then if I look down here, it says zero errors, zero warnings. And that's just kind of a quirk from running this from my local host. But if you did have real errors, then it would give you a quick summary of those errors. And that way you'd be able to address the problems with your HTML, fix anything that's wrong, and in doing so, make your website look more attractive to search engines. So now that we've done all this, I'm going to pretend that I did this for real. I'm going to go back to configuration, search and metadata, SEO checklist, and mark this off. Again, this is under optimizing content and we need to scroll down a bit. It's already checked off install and enable for us. And we've configured everything to the best that we can. Click save. And we're all set with the W3C validator.